Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So Toyota should have made a big breakthrough in solid state battery that many are talking about. So let's take a look at the battery and let's see how, when, what and where. And let's try to take a look into the future of our transportation sector, because it could be changing into something we have never seen before and faster than we have ever seen before. So let's take a look at Toyota's battery and the future of our transportation. And let's dive right in. So Toyota and Panasonic have made a partnership to develop a solid state battery and they have it right now in the lab and we will reel a prototype car this year with a solid state battery. The car should have 500 kilometers of range which is not impressive but the charging time is. It will charge this 500 kilometers in just 10 minutes. So that's very impressive. The battery should have twice the range of a normal battery. So when Toyota only comes out with a 500 kilometer range car that is still less than my Tesla Model 3, it's probably because they are still very expensive batteries. So to keep the cost down, they also put in half the amount of batteries. So this is why the range is not twice as long. So even though Toyota will have a car revealed this year, does not mean mass production. It will only be a working prototype and limited production should not start before 23 or 24. But in the article from Car Drive, it says that Toyota and Panasonic will have limited production still in 2025. Car Drive believe it is because Toyota still have a lot of issue to solve with the scalability because the production that is needed for this solid state battery is in an ultra dry environment where workers reach in to work on the cells through sealed rubber gloves. If this is the case, it really does not look good for scalability. Where Tesla on the other hand has taken an inspiration from the bottle industry that is one fluid non-stop production with pretty much no human interactions. Toyota and Panasonic is working on cells through rubber gloves. Yeah, they still have a long way to go. And Car Drive also talks about the battery being expensive. And that is, of course, expected of a new technology. But this is just to me again showing we are a long way from something that can compete with Tesla's 4680 lithium ion cells because the amount of batteries that can be produced to the car industry is going to be the key. Because it doesn't matter if you can get 1000 miles of range if it's too expensive. It doesn't matter if it can charge in 10 minutes if you can't produce them in the thousands of gigawatt hours. Because if we compare to Tesla's new battery, that is also a big breakthrough in pretty much every way that matters, they did not come out with some new expensive battery technology. Tesla knew they had to make it cheap for it to work, but also be better. And we all know that is a very difficult task, because pretty much all new technology is better, but very expensive in the beginning. But Tesla gave us something that is half the price, 56% cheaper and 54% longer range and six times more power and so on and so on. And that is in itself a major achievement. But as I have said before, the biggest breakthrough of this battery is that it has been engineered from the bottom up to be easy and fast to produce. Many of the other battery breakthroughs are only focusing on the performance of the battery. But as I've talked about before, even if the diamond battery should ever come true and the car never have to charge again, it doesn't matter if you can only make enough for a thousand cars. But Tesla has had this in mind from the beginning. This battery Tesla is making is tailor-made for the car industry. This battery will not be in your phone or in your computer or anything else. This is made to go into vehicles. Just like Tesla has made their own chip that is one of the most powerful chips in the world, 
but it will never power your laptop, but it's only made to be good for full self-driving. So this is a very big difference. I have seen many talk about the Toyota Solid State being a huge deal and it will change everything, but I really don't think we will see this battery in many cars before the end of this decade, and not even close to the amount that Tesla will be able to produce at that point. So probably not more than QuantumScape that we have talked about before, that has a plan of 90 gigawatt hours in 2028, and they are in the partnership with Volkswagen, and should have solved most of the problems that we see with solid state batteries, like it can't make many charging cycles and so on. But 90 gigawatt hours will not be enough to make any kind of dent in the car industry. Remember, I do believe what Toyota and QuantumScape is talking about and their plans, but I also believe Tesla will hit their target and their plan, but their target is 3000 gigawatt hours by 2030. So they will probably have 2500 gigawatt hours in 2028 and QuantumScape would be at 90. This is a big difference, and I don't think Toyota's new solid state battery is a big deal, or at least not yet. I don't think it will be in this decade we will see a true mass production of solid state batteries. And therefore, is it too late? Well, Tesla will have enough batteries to make over 20 million vehicles at that point. So what do you think? I think it will be too late, because Tesla is not just stopping here with their 4680 cells, they are already working on making it better, and Elon Musk does believe that they will have a density of over 400 watt hour per kilogram in only 3 to 4 years. So where will they be in 10 years? because that would also change how many vehicles they can produce with the amount of gigawatt hours. Because if we take the 3000 gigawatt hours and say the average car will have 75 kilowatt hour battery pack, like the Model Y and Model 3, the 3000 gigawatt hours is actually enough for 40 million vehicles. Of course, Tesla will also be making the Cybertruck and Semi-Truck that will really suck a lot of batteries, so they will of course not make 40 million vehicles, but in theory they could. But in 10 years time, the batteries will be much better so maybe the average in a car will be only 50 kilowatt hours or even lower but with 50 kilowatt hours in a car tesla will have enough batteries in 2030 to about 60 million vehicles so for tesla to be able to make 20 million cars in 2030 in my opinion should not be a problem they will definitely no longer be battery constrained there can of course be a lot of other factors that can slow them down, but it will not be because of batteries. As Elon Musk said, Tesla will be head and shoulders above anyone in manufacturing. That is their goal. And not just in cars, they will also be far ahead of anyone in battery manufacturing. Because it was Tesla that was out talking about the amount of batteries we need to make the transition to electric vehicles. And has actually been working on this because no one else had been able to deliver or even show Tesla that they can make the amount of batteries that is needed for Tesla and the entire car industry. So Tesla had to do it themselves. And now they have. And Tesla's batteries is no longer in the lab. They are already at 10 gigawatt hours of production in their pilot line in Fremont and will already scale to 100 gigawatt hours next year. So more next year than QuantumScape or Toyota probably will have a plan for in 2028. So Toyota may have some great breakthrough in solid state batteries as so many others has claimed, but it does not sound like it's very scalable. So I really don't think it's going to matter that much. So this is actually one thing I disagree with Sandy Monroe on because I do believe him in anything he says about cars because he is the car expert and I'm definitely not. But I actually think he's wrong when it comes to solid state because he thinks we will have a breakthrough in solid state batteries within this decade that will change everything. I don't I don't believe we will have it in this decade when it comes to production of it. There will no doubt be a battery breakthrough and in 20 years we will probably look back and laugh at the 400 watt hours per kilogram we were talking about was a very good battery. <laughs> but I don't think we will have anything that is scalable to matter in the car industry this decade. I believe QuantumScape will be probably some of the biggest in the solid state field this decade and they will have about 90 gigawatt hours in 2028 in partnership with Volkswagen. So that is only enough for about 1.2 million vehicles. 
It is not going to matter in this decade. Maybe it will be a big thing in the next decade. But I do believe the war for electric vehicles is going to be. But it's hard to talk about something that's going to happen in 10 years in our transportation industry and not talk about full self-driving cars. Because I believe this will be a thing this decade. And if you believe that, then everything will change and the speed of which this new disruption will happen is going to be faster than anything we have seen before. And there is something that is making Tesla something special here because we have seen many new kind of technology innovation come along before but then the timing is not right. We see them disappear again or maybe a decade later somebody brings it up again and the timing is right and it becomes a big thing. But I do believe Tesla has the timing right. But not just for their full self-driving or their batteries or their production, but all of this innovation is coming together at the same time and will therefore be one of the biggest disruptions we have ever seen, in my opinion. Let me try to explain my thoughts here. It is of course all just speculation and a moonshot, but I do think it has a chance of happening because of the timing of Tesla is going to have. So right now we have 1.4 billion vehicles on the road that need to be replaced with electric vehicles. But when we will have full self-driving vehicles, we only need about 80% less cars. So we do not need to replace the one and a half billion vehicles, but only needs to put about 300 million full self-driving cars on the road to replace the 1.5 billion non-full self-driving cars. And if Tesla will be able to, by 2030, to make 20 million cars per year that are all full self-driving, Tesla would actually theoretically be able to replace the entire world's vehicle fleet in only 15 years, all by themselves. And we know the car usually don't live longer than 15 years, so already in 2045 we could have replaced the entire transportation sector, no more ice and all full self-driving. But BMW still think they will be selling ice vehicles in 2050. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. <laughs> but Tesla is, of course, not going to do all this by themselves. But in theory, they could, and it would only take about 15 years. So together with the rest of the transportation sector, we could do this even faster. And Elon has been saying that he's open to sharing his full self-driving software and battery technology. So this is a very big disruption of our transportation industry that I believe is coming much, much faster than people realize. We did see a hundred years ago how fast new technology can take over. The famous picture of new New York where we see all horses and one car and only 10 years later we see all cars and only one horse. 10 years and most of the transportation was changed. And I believe this innovation could go even faster because it's not just ice to electric but full self driving is going to come at the same time dramatically reducing how many cars we need to replace. So the change can happen even much 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 faster. So the timing here for Tesla's battery technology and full self-driving and production capability is what could make this disruption explode. So if we for a moment just believe that Tesla will solve the full self-driving in within the next five to 10 years, and in 2030, they will definitely be allowed to drive on any road around the world. And we also believe that Tesla will make 3000 gigawatt hours of batteries in 2030. So if you are not in the game at this point, I don't believe you will be anymore because Tesla would in theory be able to put at least 20 million vehicles on the road per year that are all for self-driving. So not only will Tesla make enough cars to replace the entire one and a half billion non full self-driving cars in 15 years, if they don't scale up, of course, but they will probably do that and make it even faster. But this will also make the whole talk about charging time range and degradation and blah, 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 and so on and so on totally irrelevant 
And this is why I think if you don't make a big breakthrough in batteries and production of it in this decade, it is not going to matter. Because if pretty much every new vehicle that is coming out in 2030 will be full self-driving, then not many normal people will own a car anymore. I know it's hard to believe and there will of course be some edge cases, but the simple financial part of it will make it pretty much insane to own a full self-driving car, because it will be 10 times cheaper to subscribe to a full self-driving service than to own the car. And on top of that, you don't have to worry about maintenance, new tires, insurance, or charging and range. You just summon a car when you need it, and that is it. The company in this example, Tesla, will take care of all the rest. Therefore, it doesn't matter if the car charges in 10 or 20 minutes. Also because the range in 2030 will be way above what you would comfortably drive in one go. So the range doesn't matter either. So all this talk about charging speed and range and so on and so on will pretty much be irrelevant when we have full self-driving cars. Because who cares? It's, it's not your car. You will never worry about charging it because you will never charge it. So the only thing that will matter at this point is can you make enough batteries? And with full self-driving cars around, you will only need 80% less than we need today. So if somebody comes with a big battery breakthrough in 2035, that will make your car drive 10,000 miles on one charge. It doesn't matter. You don't care. It could make the production for the one that is making the car cheaper or whatever, but we will no longer be talking about range and charging speed. We just summon a car when we need it, and that's it. So I do believe Tesla will have the timing of the century with full self-driving and battery production. And all this will start within this decade. So if your battery breakthrough is not ready to be scaled to the thousands of gigawatts in this decade, it might be too late. But what do you think? Is this too crazy of a moonshot? <laughs> or will we see somebody like Tesla be a very dominating force in the whole transportation sector? Let me know how you see this play out in the next decade in the comments below. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.